next time. Yeah. Uh, so this talk is about uh, talking about uh, design patterns that we use in Triton, and I think it's good to share with you, and like that you will be perhaps able to apply one now to uh, those patterns. Uh, so what are design patterns? They are solution for common problem you can really uh, find in your daily work. And it's solutions that are somewhere proven to be optimized to, to, to solve the, the, solu the, the, the problems. And uh, it's generally reusable solution, so you can normally apply to different uh, situations. Uh, so why using the design patterns? Uh, it's a way to not reinvent the, the wheel. So uh, you will win in time uh, when you are facing the, a problem. If you identify that, okay, this is something I know, we can solve it this way, you don't have to care to again try to find another solution will be, maybe will be uh, less optimized than something like that. Uh, the, it's, it was used by others, so in some way it's proven to, to work. So you don't have to care about knowing if it will work in all cases and stuff like that. Um, and uh, in some way it's easier for others, developers, to understand your code because you are using something that they already know in some way. So it's easier to collaborate if you are using such a design. But of course, it's not, you should not try to always apply a design pattern. It's not always the case. You can have a specific problem, so you should not try to always uh, apply. So I identified few design patterns that we are using in Triton in many places. And so we will uh, go through uh, all of them and try to explain each case and why they are useful and uh, what you could apply. Uh, I think it will, maybe it's, it will be easier if you have a question of one tech pattern to ask questions during just the presentation of this one and, and move on. Because there is quite a lot. So the first is what I name it if and if. Um, because Triton is based on modularity, uh, you cannot uh, rely on the fact that if you have two options, that the second option is always the second option. Maybe you have another module that will add a new case, and indeed of having two possibilities, you have three possibilities, because of the modality of Triton. So you should not, you should always test that the default value you usually you use, it's still the default value. So in this case, for example, uh, we have on the invoice, on the sales, different kind of invoice method. By default, we have only two invoice method, but we should always test the second one, because someone could maybe uh, implement another invoice method, and so you don't want to run the code here for this third invoice method. So this is not usual to to make just if and if and nothing else. But for Triton, it's very useful. And so you you should always try to apply this kind of uh, behavior. So careful with this one. The model is in Triton. It's a it's a mixing. So it's a class that you can uh, inherit for any other mod uh, with any other model of Triton, and it allows you to ensure that you have only one record of this model in your database. This is useful to store configuration. Uh, it's more uh, business configuration, uh, configuration that the user should be able to change. 
Uh, and the usage of such uh, singleton is to always instantiate the records one. Uh, indeed, we don't care about the number here, but by convention, we always use one. That's, uh, that's fine. Uh, so you, you will see in many places in the code such patterns, and it's completely valid and should be used when you want to configure. And the idea also is to have one configuration class by set of modules like cell, accounting, or whatever. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah, small uh, remarks. Uh, for now, you cannot make uh, as, as it, uh, reference to the configuration. So you cannot create a minute one that points to the configuration object. It will not work always. But in some way, there is no need to, for that because it's, you have only, always only one record. So no need to point to this record. Um, the second pattern, uh, it's the way we use in Triton to honor records. Uh, it was optimized to limit the number of writes on the database when you order the records from the client. And to be able to do that, uh, the sequence should be an integer, of course. But uh, it, could, it should be a nullable integer. Uh, nullable. Yeah. Because by default, we will put no values in the sequence. Uh, sorry, a what? Nullable. 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 Can be done. Uh, because uh, what we will add is we will add, of course, on the setup of the class, an order on, on the se sequence field. Uh, but we insert, insert it on top. But by default, we have a second order that's come from the model SQL, model SQL class, I think, uh, which order on the ID. So, by, and by design, in Triton, all the IDs are uh, increasing over, over time by creation. So, um, if we have nothing set in the sequence field, we will have the default order of the creation, which is the one we expect when we create records. And so, like that, there is no values to set up, no uh, integers, because before that, this, uh, these patterns we now use, we will have to make a query on the database to count how much record we already have in the database and put in the sequence field this value plus one to be sure to, have, to, to be the next one, but uh, it was quite easy because when you create a lot of records, having to count always the number of records is uh, really uh, uh, expensive. But to be able to order with the new value, you have to customize a little bit how uh, Postgres or any uh, SQL database order the, the sequence uh, field. For that, you create these methods. It's a method that you can put on, uh, on your models. And it's it replaces the default order uh, that Triton uh, used. And here, we make just a special case that if sequence is null, we use zero as value. Like that it's on top. This is the first record, and otherwise we have one, which comes after, and we order all of the. Uh, after that, we order also on the sequence. So this is to ensure that null comes first, because this is something that is not standardized in SQL. Null could be before or after every record. So here we ensure. It's a way to be sure that it will be always order it first in the, any database. Uh, yeah, and I just put uh, that this code uh, is duplicated all over Triton, so we could create a mixing for that. There is an issue 
If someone want to pick it for tomorrow, <laughs> it will be great. Uh, and yeah, uh, no question. Uh, the next is the match mixing. Uh, it's again a, a mixing. It's the idea is to find a way, uh, a modular way, to select to select uh, one record out of a list. So um, yeah, the, the idea is that uh, in many uh, case in Triton, what we have is to select uh, a method or uh, uh, a price, for example, for the price list or something like that, ba based on the actual values you have on your records. And if we want to be sure that uh, other developers can add new parameters and change a little bit the, the way the application works, we, have, we need to have a way for them to add new uh, criteria to select which one to pick up. And the idea is that we will uh, what we we'll try to select a record out of a list. We will uh, look over those records and try to match the records with a pattern. And we will stop at the first matching record. Uh, and the pattern is a dictionary of uh, key, uh, field value, field's name as key and the values of the field as value of the dictionary. Uh, and usually, these patterns, you will uh, fetch it from a method like that other modules can happen new uh, keys to it if they need. And the match methods what you get from the match mixing uh, class, and it will try to find to it will test that all the keys from the pattern, uh, all the values of the keys of the pattern, equals the values of the records, and it, it, it takes care of if it's a minute word or a reference field or an integer and so on. But yeah, how is it different from using? Uh, Domain pattern and using the search method. Um, because if you are using uh, a domain, uh, the, the idea is also is that your list is not uh, too big. It should be uh, quite a few records uh, because and generally it's something that the user has entered, so you cannot expect the user from the uh, thousands of records for, uh, for for the price list, for example. It's normally just few records. Uh, and so, if we use uh, a domain instead of uh, the pattern, what we will have is we will have to query uh, each time we need to find the match we will have to make a queries to the database. But here, uh, if we call this code many times, uh, the records will be in the cache of, the, of Triton, and there will be no access to the database. And because it will be a, uh, a short list, and it will be in memory, and so we can look here, and it will cost nothing, almost nothing, to, to perform the match. Instead of each time making a query to the database, maybe with the same domain or whatever, and so it could be more efficient to read all the records once and uh, keep it in memory instead of query. When you say short lists? Yeah. I don't know, 20 or. <laughs> depends. The, the cache will work un, up to. Uh, well, Right. Yeah. <coughs> the cache uh, Thank you. 
was. <coughs> and uh, now it's also a configurator. Cash record 2000. 2000. Two thousand, and it's configurable, so you can you can increase it if you want. So uh, it's depend of your uh, usage. So, but yeah, we use it in many places. Uh, I think yeah, here yeah. uh, we use it for tax rule, for the tax rounding to define if we have to round on document or on lines. Uh, for the commission plan, the price list, the product supplier, the sale extra, if I if we have to add an extra to the sale and the sale promotion. So yeah, that's this kind of way to do it. It's not as I said at the beginning, the design pattern you should not always try to apply them if it's not doesn't match exactly the the usage. So the workflow. So uh, we have dropped the old workflow engine since I think uh, two or three series, uh, and instead we have we come with a solution that is more I think flexible. Uh, it's based again on a mixing, even if there is no mixing, but it's a, it's a mixing, uh, and. So what is a workflow? It's a, it's a tool to manage the life of, of the records. Uh, and for that, we use uh, a state field, which is usually a selection field. Uh, and it's stored on the record. So the, the state of the record is stored on the record, when previously it was stored on another, on another table, and it was really killing the performance. Uh, and you can define the name of the field with this uh, attribute uh, by default instead because it's what we use all over the place so, but if you want to use a, a, another one you can uh, and we just define the transition from state to state that are allowed so here we can go from graph to quotation from quotation to confirm but if I have no, no signals declared, I cannot go from quotation to graph or from confirm to quotation. So it's based on declaration, and you can uh, another module could extend this transition uh, set uh, to add more transition, or if you if also you add new states, you can you will have to put new transition, and this is really uh, the basics we. We have before declaration tables of the states of different uh, the transition for from all the states and stuff like that, and this is exactly the same but written in few lines instead of uh, thousand of uh, XML files uh, and uh, stored it in a database that you have to read over and over. And here it's only in the memory and so it's read fast. And to use to check these transitions, what we have is we use uh, methods. So you don't, you don't, you do not update the state field anymore. Normally, you should never write on it. You should let the workflow transition manage it for you, and it check. So you define here the, the state to which you want to go, and it check that you are coming from the right state. If you are not, the 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 decorator will uh, skip the, the records that are not allowed to go to the transition. It's uh, uh, a silent uh, error, if you want, <laughs> but uh, this allows us to not or to call the methods whatever we, we are on the states, and we know that we will not raise any exception, and what can go to the Transition will go and the other will stay in the set. Uh, because it, it will be very complicated to filter ourselves the records we pass to the methods. 
because for modularity you can the test right on easily. So that's and uh, the decorator at the end of the call will write the state uh, rotation to the valid record scheme. And so you never have to write the, the state. It's managed for, for you. And the good point is this uh, this uh, method signature is also the same as for buttons. So you can also put the buttons uh, dec uh, decorator on it, and it will be the button that do the transition automatically. So you, uh, you have only one method for the two functionality. That's uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The uh, no question for the workflow. Okay. Um, Another uh, pattern is the usage of different status fields uh, for different to store the state of different stuff. Uh, for example, uh, on the cell we have three state fields that represent each one the state of something else. Uh, before there was some attempt to mix them, but indeed it doesn't work. We it's much better to have uh, one field for one kind of to try the state of one record, and nothing else. So uh, yeah, that's is the the development. And if there is a new inverse state, you just have to care about this field and not the other one. And, so. and sometimes the combination of all the states could be very complex. And, don't want to manage that. But uh, of course there is no workflow on the on Moses. No, of course. No, for now the workflow we could have only one state. Uh, maybe so, uh, I think a uh, good improvement of the workflow will be to allow to apply multiple times the workflow uh, mixing to the same class and have many workflow working on different fields uh, independently. That could be uh, something that will be nice, but I have no usage for it, so <laughs> maybe it's just for... <laughs> for, for yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, another point that is, I think it's really, this one is really important, and Maybe I think it will apply for all new development. This, uh, with Triton, we always work at the line level, mm -hmm. which means we create we have documents with a lot of lines, but indeed we, it's each line is managed independently. The document is just there for the user to perform uh, operation on all the lines at once, but it's just for that. Uh, when uh, on the cell, for example, we create the invoice. Indeed, it's each line of the cell that creates its own invoice line. And the link is done on the lines level. And after that, we just put all the lines invoice line created inside one invoice by default. But the idea is maybe you want to have two invoice, or you want to put all the lines into an existing invoice and stuff like that. So we should not try to link documents together, but it's only the lines that are the links between uh, them. And uh, so that allows us to be much more flexible and to perform, to have modules that uh, other ERP uh, cannot uh, write, like the cell uh, invoice grouping for example, which put all the generated invoice of one customer together, or I think we can split also the shipments uh, for one cell into multiple shipments and stuff like that. And uh, what often happens is that on the lines, we have an origin field that is a reference field to maybe just for the invoice, 
it's a reference field to the cell line, but it can be also a, a reference to the purchase line and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Next. Yeah. So, more question? Yeah, another one is the get up method. Uh, it's again a way to manage the modularity in a much easier way. Uh, what we have often is we have on the records uh, a selection field that defines a, a method. It could be the invoice method or the shipment method or the I don't know what else. Uh, and as usual, uh, we want to allow other modules to create new possibilities, new methods. Uh, and for that, uh, a good way to manage uh, this kind of uh, uh, needs is to have one method, generic method, uh, that apply the selected method. And to apply, we don't test the value of the method stream, but we use, uh, we expect that the developers create a method with a specific pattern, which contain the name of the method. Okay. Yeah. Like that, here we have X and Y methods, and so we have to create those two functions. But if uh, those modules want to create uh, the, the uh, Z method, you will just have to open here the new values and create a new method to Z. And so it's, you don't, you, all the some part of the code will really still work and should be independent and should not care about anything else. Um, this pattern is used for invoicing on project because the idea is that you can define the method, different methods for each sub-project of the project and stuff like that. So this is a, a way to, to manage. And you can extend it to create new methods, invoice methods, uh, without having to care about uh, the previous one. Okay. Uh, the only drawbacks of this way is that it's can be a little bit complicated to find bugs if you forget to create the right method. You will have here a strange error that doesn't find uh, an attribute of the class. And maybe it will be difficult to make the link between uh, the pattern and the name here you will have for the wrong message. So, but, uh, you have to test your code. Uh, yeah. Uh, those, another pattern is the creation by using group by. This is uh, a pattern. We all often have the case where, as I said, we work on the lines level. So we are on the documents and we have a lot of lines. We create those li uh, uh, from this li those lines. We create new lines for another document, for example, the invoice lines for, from the same. But the way we are going to create the invoice object that will contain the lines, uh, we want to be able to customize and define. I want to put all the lines in one invoice or put the lines in different invoice based on some criteria, uh, I don't know, like creating an invoice with all the service and an invoice with all the uh, goods, or with the different dates for each one, I don't know. Um, and so, to be able to do that, we need to, a way to group the invoice, to, uh, the, the lines together uh, in a generic way that can be extended by other modules. And for that, we use the iter tools from Python, which is group by. Uh, it's a method that uh, loop over the, the iterator that you give. Here it's the lines. And uh, it will generate one entry 
for each key that's come from here. And here it's a, it's a, a list of the lines that match it, this key. So you, uh, it's a way to group. So it groups the, the lines together. Uh, one important thing to know is that maybe you should order this list on your keys because uh, group by will generate a new key each time uh, it change. So that's a result. But maybe it's something you want. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> and the key to, to groups the, the lines, uh, the idea is to use a tuples of key values. Why using a tuples of key values? Uh, because we need something that is order or orderable, orderable? sortable okay. by Python. So uh, tuples are sortable, and in s after that, the the values of the keys we will use to create the documents. Because most of the time, you are going to group uh, the lines based on the values you will put on the main document. So when it, if it's, uh, for example, the, the, the date, uh, need, we, did, we do the, this pattern for creating the shipments from the sale. And so you have the shipping date that can be different for each line. And the shipping date, it's something that the shipments will have. And so you apply this list of key values, you convert it into a dictionary, and you use it as the values for the, the document you are going to create. Is it OK? Mm -hmm. OK. And uh, after that, you put the lines uh, on the document, and we save all the documents later. Uh, a small tip is here. The lines, it's not really a list that you receive, but it's an iterator. So, uh, you should be careful. You, cannot, you should convert to a list if you have to look over multiple times. Uh, yeah. That's a good uh, Another uh, pattern is the process method. It's uh, a name we find and we are reusing all over uh, the documents. Uh, Often, what we have is we have a document, and it goes with the workflow from a few steps. And uh, at one moment, it's, it uh, it reaches a state where it stays for a long time and is waiting for events from outside, from other documents and stuff like that. Uh, and this is the, the process. So generally, this state we have. We name it uh, processing. So, and uh, the the idea of this me method, uh, so we create a method that's called process, is that we perform some operation uh, each time. It's we call this process method, and this process method will be called by other documents that are linked to the to our document. Uh, for example, if you go with the sale and the shipment, uh, the sh uh, any shipment, once you go to the, uh, to the done state, it will call back all the sales from the lines of the shipment and call process on it. Like that, the, the sales can update their uh, shipment status and put it to shipping if it's fully shipped. Uh, and, and so on. And the, the important stuff in this uh, method is to be independent. So it means that you can call it as many times as you want, the result will be always the same. So uh, it means that the status of the record after calling process will be always the same if you call it multiple times with the same record. Uh, it's a way to ensure that at the end we will have the state, the state we want uh, and uh, by 
because of the modularity, we don't know how much time this method will be told. Uh, someone uh, will maybe override the shipments and make some change and call again the process method of the cell. So it should, this method should be uh, designed to be, uh, to be called many times and so yeah, having no border effect and this thing. Uh, yeah. And uh, also usually it's a button because when we start the first step, it's we use the generally trigger it by the user, so it's generally a button. Okay. Just the last one. <laughs> so. There is any question? Uh, I think this uh, this talk was very nice because uh, this is the kind of information that uh, speeds up our comprehension of the system uh, because I must confess that it took me like two or three months to understand that everything in Triton was about lines, not about documents. And uh, maybe one slide would uh, make this process a little faster. And, uh, and I would like to ask you a more philosophical question. Mm -hmm. How does your brain work? <laughs> <laughs> you first, <laughs> you first uh, create a design pattern in your mind and then start to apply it or it's backwards. You, you see that something is repeating over and over again and you, th and you think, oh, maybe it's bad to, to extract this code into a pattern. It's both. Sometimes it's, it's uh, a new need and, okay, let's try to, to fix it, to find a solution for, for it. Uh, and sometimes it's, you do the same stuff <laughs> for the third time Okay, this is boring. You should uh, have the tool for that. And it's uh, it's a running process. It's always and in some way it's always changing. Maybe last, uh, next year it will, I will pick other patterns. <laughs> uh, some are there since a long time, so still pretty sure that they don't change. Mm -hmm. Anymore, but um, yeah, that's because we we have issue for for the workflow. We it's with Nicola we, we we get a very strange bug in the workflow engine, and in some way we could not figure out how to fix it. So we said uh, there is something wrong. <laughs> it's it's, a, it's a, the code is too complicated to. We cannot fix that, so we have to simplify. And so we just think, what do we need exactly? And at the end, we find, okay, we just need transition and methods. That's all we need. And because what was the idea behind the workflow before is that the user will design the workflow. Mm -hmm. It's not the user, it's the developer. So. Okay. It's I know that this question is related to the design, but um, how can we store some sort of constants that they belong to, a, to an instance itself? Can I use um, elements and put them on the configuration file at operating system level? Can I use properties or maybe both or for example we were talking one of these days on on the uh, how to put the, the the person name you know to have 
-hmm. that this should be the way to display the name in Brazil, mm -hmm. it should be the way to display the name in China, and other things that I have. So what's what's the idea in this? I don't want to hard code stuff. I don't want to, for example, on, on terms of what is the fertile period of a, of a lady. Some countries is starts normally later than in another ones and whatever. So for me, it would be very easy to have a list of constants that I can put probably in some uh, file that I can just put lower limit and, and upper limit and then or what would be the pattern for the display of the name. And then when I have my little module of my method, I can just go there and grab that information without hard coding the yeah. things. Uh, I think you have two, two problems. Uh, for the name, I think it's not the configuration of the system. Uh, uh, I think you have uh, pattern, you have way to compose the name, and it depends on uh, some criteria. And I think it, the patch mixing uh, pattern applies here. You can have a list with criteria. Maybe it's the, the country, the origin country of the party, or uh, the, the, the address, or whatever, or the address of the company. Uh, company. Uh, that will define how you want to format uh, the name of everybody and stuff like that. So for me, I think it, the match missing uh, apply here. And I guess for the premium C, uh, it will be a configuration. Uh, since I think 3.4, the configuration file of Triton, it's uh, flexible. So you can create your for your own modules uh, a section and put define uh, the, user, the installer or the, oper or the operator can uh, configure and define the, the values. I think maybe it's, uh, it's a way. Or, of course, you, have, you still have the possibility to have a configuration object. And that's what I was thinking, having like a model yeah, where I can just put all those content and... That's also... Because if you put it when I thought if, if you put it in the configuration file, then it's not that, of course they are supposed to be constants, but on the other side, uh, if, if we know we have this configuration model, we yeah. can later on change, yeah, it would so be belonging to that specific instance of that database. Yeah, so you can use the configuration, the, sing, the model singleton to, to store it. Okay. I think it's... Uh, and you sometimes we use property field on the configuration mm -hmm. to be company aware, even if something we would like to remove. But no. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. it's fine. <laughs> it's the property field that we want to remove. No, you're talking about removing property, mm -hmm. not company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so both ways would be okay, either just put it on the Triton that config or having yeah, uh, the Triton config is of course more technical. It's something that you don't change. But often. normally it's it's very rarely changed because we are talking about constants so we can just Yeah, it's a choice between okay. so, yeah.